Hello and welcome to another lesson in our trades training video series. I'm Joe Carswell and this lesson is going to cover materials and tools used in the taping process. We have a whole nother lesson on the actual process, but let's get into some of these parts and pieces that makes this happen. First, a thank you to Benjamin Moore for their financial support that has made this video possible to you at no cost. Why do we tape and mask? This is an entire process that we need to do before we can ever paint. There's a lot of reasons we need to protect certain surfaces from paint. We only want to apply that paint to certain places and we need to keep it off of others. Tape and masking is a great way to do this. And believe it or not, it seems like an extra step, but really what you're doing is saving yourself time in the end. There's a little extra expense and effort in it. But if you've ever painted and you understand the mess that's involved in it, it's easier to control with this particular process. So at the end of the job, there will be less cleanup because we're protecting certain areas. In this photograph in the presentation, you're seeing a specific masking of an area that now we can paint all of the trim. So all of these wall edges are getting taped. Now this trim can be painted. We don't have to worry about all of these wall surfaces getting trim paint on them. If you've ever been a painter and you're going doing touch-ups, you're going back and forth, it gets very frustrating if you're repainting things that have already been done. So in this case, the walls were finished. Now it's time to do the trim. That might not be the universal way to paint a room, but in this case, it's going to speed up this process. Another reason to mask would be to cover large areas if we're spraying. A lot of times when we're painting, a sprayer comes out and there's no way to keep paint off of surfaces that don't need to be sprayed other than using tape and masking materials. Sometimes custom painting comes into play and if we need a really perfectly straight line, we can use tape to achieve this. There are some extra steps and it's a special process and even a special tape to do this, we'll go over that. But if you do tape walls off, you can get perfect stripes this way and take a paint edge, which is typically not perfect and maze it, make it laser sharp. Sometimes we need to protect areas that will never receive paint. Those would be masonry, concrete, and a lot of expensive materials that are very difficult to clean a paint if they get accidentally coated. There are special tapes to get that done. These tapes would be a high adhesive tape and will work on a number of very difficult situations. Let's go through some different tapes you'll use as a painter for masking. To start with, one of the very common ones would be a white masking tape. This is gonna be a three day release, kind of a medium adhesive tape going to come in different widths. This is a blue painter's tape. This one is going to be a little lighter adhesive on it. You're going to use this a lot. This particular one is a 21 day release. That means a clean release even after three weeks of being installed. You might see a specialty painter's tape. This one is going to be a very light adhesive for very fragile surfaces. This tape gets very thin and it can be used in places where other tapes can't. Problem with tapes are that if you put a too strong of an adhesive down on a surface, it could damage that surface. Last up, I have a heavy duty plastic tape. This can be used for uh, floor protection, for adhering to difficult surfaces like concrete and masonry, places that we need to mask that might never receive any paint. Tape's gonna come in a number of different widths. We need to choose the right tape for whatever application we're doing. It has to do with how much protection we need and how much money we wanna spend. The wider the tape, the more expensive it's gonna be. So we're going to use the width of tape that will get the job done. Also, the narrower the tape, the less surface you have to stick down, but the wider the tape, the harder it is to work with. So you always want that medium, the one that's going to be the most economical that will get the job done and stay in place until the job's done. 
Tape comes in different thicknesses. Typically, the thickness of the tape is going to match the strength of the adhesive. If you have a light adhesive on a tape, it should be very thin. If you have a very strong adhesive on a tape, the tape is going to have to be much thicker so that when you go to remove that later, it's going to come off in one solid pull. The adhesive on the tape becomes very important when we're talking about what we're sticking it to. It's not always the super strong tape that we need. And our surfaces need to be nice and clean so that our tape will stick. A lot of these gentle adhesive tapes require a very clean surface. And as we all know from life experience, a dirty surface is a really terrible base to stick anything to. As you see on the left here, it's a blue painter's tape trying to stick to a piece of trim. And that trim was not cleaned well to start with, so it's not going to stick. We need that tape to stay in place until the job's done. You don't want to have to do this process twice or even stop in the middle of the painting process to then retape. On the other photograph here in the presentation, you see a tape that was chosen that was way too strong of an adhesive, and it literally pulled the finish up off the floor. So make sure that you're not just making the decision to use the strongest tape you can find. When we're talking about adhesive, we get into release times. And the release time of the tape is a manufacturer's recommendation or a spec that they give you that will tell you that this tape can be left on a surface for a specific amount of time. And when it's removed, it will give you a clean release, which means it will pull up safely and not leave any of the sticky residue behind. As you see here, this blue painter's tape is rated at 14 days. My blue painter's tape here is rated at 21. You can always check the label before you peel it or even on the inside here, it should give you that specific release time. The white painter's tape, is. this is a five day in the presentation. My white tape here is a three day release. So they're all a little different. The manufacturers are going to spell that out on their products. If you see the frog tape in this particular uh, presentation, this is a very specific special made tape that has a 60 day clean release on it. So they are expecting that tape to be in place for two months before you need to pull it up and it's going to come up clean. Crepe on a tape is a specific feature or aspect that is not present on all tapes, but when it is, it allows that tape to bend and form very easily to shapes that are not perfectly flat. Uh, you, I don't know if you can see that this in my uh, tape here, but this tape has some lines that are running this direction back and forth. There are small wrinkles in this tape. And what that allows this tape to do is to bend and form in other directions other than the straight flat line that this tape is made in. Using a quality tape is probably one of the best decisions you can make when you're choosing and buying your materials to prep for painting. A low quality tape is going to leave residue behind. It's gonna be hard to pull off. The tape might not even come off in one pull or the adhesive might not be matched to the tape material that it's backed onto. And a, an adhesive that is not uh, predictable can cause unpredictable results. It can pull up finishes. It can ruin the job that you're trying to make look nice. So a good quality paint job relies on good quality materials. That falls right into play when we're talking about taping and masking as well. There are other tools that we're going to use when we're taping. This is a five-in-one tool, and painters swear by this tool. This is a tool that can be used for multiple tasks when we're painting. One of those would be pressing tape. And blade pressing tape is a process that you would do because tape is pressure sensitive. What that means is that it requires pressure to stick to a surface effectively. And hand press tape is a process that does not include or use any tools. Blade pressing means you're going to take a flat blade or edge like a five in one tool. And when you apply that tape to a surface, you're going to hand press it first and then you're going to follow up with your blade. That extra pressure on that 
uh, tape with this tool is going to allow for more adhesion. You're activating the adhesive and you're connecting that tape to the surface. So now we can count and trust on that to hold up during our painting process. So what do we do if we want to protect certain areas that are larger than the width of the tape that we're using? We're going to use a tool we call a hand masker. What this tool is going to do is to combine a wider paper or plastic masking material with our tape that we talked about before, and it's going to roll these out simultaneously. This is a very convenient tool to use to get this job done. Now we can cover or protect much larger areas than just the tape will do by itself. And so there is a couple of reels on here. This is where my tape goes. This is where my masking material goes. This is a paper roll. It's a very thin brown paper. Also, this masker will take plastic rolls as well. So it will take a thin sheet of plastic. This is actually a six foot uh, tall curtain of plastic, and this will uh, fold out once it gets cut, and then I can use it for large things like windows or doors. So depending, the paper is generally going to be your more narrow uh, masking material. It's a little stiffer, maybe a little easier to work with. The plastic comes into play when you have larger areas and you can fold that out and use it for different size surfaces. So on the masker, you have different parts. Uh, the handle is where you're going to hold it. The reel is going to hold either the tape or the, uh, the plastic or the paper that's rolling out. And there's a cutter. This is the one thing I want to tell you about. There's a cutter on this thing. And if you wonder where my Band-Aid came from today, it's a very sharp blade on there. So this seems like a very um, harmless tool, but it's actually very sharp. So keep that in mind. And there's even warnings on it. I wasn't paying much attention to the warnings when I cut myself, but keep in mind, this is a sharp tool that is going to cut through tape and paper and plastic and anything else that's in the way of the blade. So here is what this is going to look like when you wind it out. I have a sample here. I've got my tape and now I have my masking paper. This is a 12 inch masking paper with an inch and a half tape. Now my coverage or protected area is much larger than, than just the tape itself. This is a list of terms we would use when we're talking about taping and masking in the painting process. So I hope you've learned something about some very simple materials and a couple of tools that we use to get through this process of prepping and protecting areas before we actually do any painting. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the process video for taping and masking. This video is a production of Trade Skills U, all rights reserved. If you provide instruction in the construction trades and have a need for videos like these, please contact us at tradeskillsu.com. Many of the images in this presentation were found on the internet, and this is a list of their sources.